Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. It's been about a week since the last video, but today we are going to be looking at my first college football top 25 rankings of the year. But before we begin, be sure to subscribe so we can get to 20 subscribers. We're at 18 right now, we can do it. But let's get straight into the video. So, um, eh, at number 25 here we have James Madison who last year went 8-3 and three and 6-2 and two in their conference. This year, they got a new QB, lots of new receivers, and this is actually the, only their second season in the FBS. I think their most impactful player is going to be their new running back, Tyson Lawton, who is a senior, and he's he just transferred from Stony Brook this offseason. So, next up, at 24, we have the Iowa Hawkeyes, their record last year was 8-5 and 5-4 five and five and in the Big Ten. They lost a lot of players in the draft, including their star linebacker, Jack Campbell, and their incredible tight end, Sam Laporta. But their most impactful player this year is going to be their new quarterback, Cade McNamara, the senior transfer from Michigan. Now, I have UTSA a little lower than some other top 25s do, but... Um, they went 11-3 and last year, and they went undefeated in their conference, 8-0. and But, of course, their conference isn't that impressive. But they even out between the players that they lost and the players that they gained. Um, their most impactful player is going to be their new um, wide receiver, Willie McCoy, who's a senior transfer from Kilgore College. So, I have UTSA at 23 but I think they could be a lot better. Maybe, like, get up to around the 15 spot. I don't think they're, like, a CFP level or anything. But they could have another solid year. So, next up we have number 22, Texas Tech. Their record is 8-5 and 5-4 five and five and in the Big 12. This draft, they did lose their star defensive end, Tyree Wilson, to the Las Vegas Raiders. He was incredible for them. One of the best defensive ends. In Texas Tech history. Their most impactful player this year is going to be Dre McRae, who's a sophomore transfer from Austin P. So I have them having a little bit better of a year from last year. Maybe go like 9-4, and four, a little better than last year. And now at 21, we have Clemson. This is really low. I know I just, all the people that they lost this year, I don't think they can bounce back this quickly. I mean, they've done it before, but it's just going to be really tough. They went 11-3 and last year and 8-0 and in their conference. They didn't make the playoffs. They lost a lot of players to the draft and the transfer portal, too. They lost Brian Brissy, who was incredible for them, then also Miles Murphy and Trenton Simpson. Those were their three main players on their defense. And then they also lost their quarterback, DJ Uyangale to Oregon State, I believe. But their most impactful player this year is going to be Christopher Vazina, who's a freshman, and he just graduated from Briarwood Christian School. So we got to see how he's going to do. I don't know. He's young. He, I don't know. We'll have to see how Clemson does this year. I just don't feel like they're going to be as good as they have been in previous years. Next up at 20th, we enter the top 20, and... I have Notre Dame. Notre Dame's record last year was 9-4, and four, and of course they're an independent school, so they are not in a conference. But to the draft this year, they lost their star tight end, probably the number one tight end in the country. Well, besides Dalton Kincaid from Utah. Michael Meyer, Drew Pine, their quarterback, and Isaiah Foskey. But here's the good thing. The good thing for Notre Dame fans, you got the star Wake Forest QB Sam Hartman, who had an incredible year last year. And, yeah, we'll see how it turns out for them. They did lose quite a bit of good talent, but we'll see how they can bounce back. So, now at number 19, we have North Carolina, who finished 9-5 and five in, well, yeah, just 9-5 and five and 6-2 and two in the ACC. Yeah, ACC, um, which I believe both of those losses were to Clemson. They lost their wide receiver, Josh Downs, and their other wide receiver, Antoine Green. Um, but they do still have their star quarterback, Drake May, who came off a Heisman finalist year. He had an incredible season, and he's only a sophomore, so we'll see what happens around there. So now we have another interesting school. 
eight and five Ole Miss. They went eight and five and four and four in their conference. They got they got better players than they lost, I believe. So they've improved this off season so far. But here's the thing: last season, everyone was thinking they're the best team in the country. They are going to the playoffs. But they started seven and zero, and then they went one and five to finish out the year. So that was not not a good turn of events for them. But their most impactful player is going to be their new wide receiver, Trey Harris, a sophomore transfer from Louisiana Tech. I think this Ole Miss team could be pretty good. Now, for Oregon State, we've got a very interesting team here. Last year, they surprised everyone and went 10-3, and 6-3 and in their conference, even out from the players that they lost to the players that they gained. But here's the thing. Their most impactful player was DJ Uyangale. The transfer from Clemson. I didn't even know that they got him, to be honest with you. But it's going to be big for them. I think Uyangale is going to fit better here at Oregon State than he did at Clemson. I like this Oregon State team. I think they'll have a similar year, year to last year and go 10-3 and three again. Um, Next up, we have Kansas State, who came off a good year last year. They went 10-4 and four and 7-2 and two in their conference. But to the draft, they lost their running back, Deuce Vaughn. Um, as well as their quarterback, Adrian Martinez. But I so I have to put the most impactful player as their new quarterback, who's going to be QB Avery Johnson. He's a freshman who just graduated from Mays High School. He was a five-star recruit. We'll have to see how he plays out in K-State. Um, next up at 15, we have Utah, whose record was 10-4 and last year. Um, they went 7-2 and in the conference. But they ended the year in a loss to Penn State in the Rose Bowl. And they lost their tight end, Dalton Kincaid, who was the number one tight end in round one of the draft. But their most impactful player is this new transfer they just got in, Lavani Damuni, the linebacker. He's a senior, and he just transferred from Stanford. I think he could be very good for them. Next up at number 14, we have TCU, whose record was... 13-2 and two last year, as well as a um, championship appearance, yeah. Um, they went 9-0 and in the Big 12. They lost their Heisman finalist, Max Duggan, though, and their star wide receiver, Quentin Johnson. But they've got a new five-star recruit wide receiver who's going to be their most impactful player. His name is Cordell Russell. He's a freshman who just graduated from North Mesquite High School. So we'll have to see how things play out for them after losing their quarterback and star wide receiver. Next up at number 13, we have Oregon, who went 10-3 and last year and 7-2 and in the Pac-12. They lost their linebacker, Noah Soul, as well as their star cornerback, second best cornerback in the country, Christian Gonzalez, who went, who did he go to? I forget. But their most impactful player is going to be I can't believe they landed this guy. Treshawn Holden, the junior, and he transferred from Alabama. Alabama has the star wide receivers. We got, oh, man, uh, just so many wide receivers. Devontae Smith, man, they go crazy with wide receivers. So we'll have to see how Treshawn Holden holds up at Oregon. Next up, we have number 12, Texas. Their record is eight, was 8-5 eight and five, and 6-3. and three. So they had a little bit of a down year, but they did lose their running back B. John Robinson who went to the Falcons yes the Falcons as well as their star linebacker DeMarvian Overshown but here's the thing most impactful player I know I don't like putting freshmen on this list because you never know how they're going to turn out but he's a Manning it's Arch Manning Peyton's son QB freshman out of Isidore Newman school and I watched this huge video about him and he is a star and he is going to be incredible for Texas. We'll just have to see how everything plays out. Next up, we have Tulane, who had an incredible year last year. He went 12-2, and shocked the world, went 7-1 and in conference play. But they did lose their star running back, Tajay Spears, who went in the third round of the draft. Um, but their most impactful player is going to be Dante Fleming, who I actually knew quite a bit about before he came to Tulane. He's a junior, and he just transferred from the Louisiana Raging Cajuns. Now we enter the top 10 with Washington, whose record was 11-2 and 7-2 and in conference play. They just lost their guard, Jackson Kirkland, and their center, Corey Luciano. 
but their most impact is going to be their wide receiver Jeremy Bernard, who they just landed out of a sophomore out of Michigan State, who just transferred to them. That's a big pickup for them. Now we have a team who ESPN actually has making the playoffs. They have them him ranked at number four. So I don't think they're going to be that high up. Maybe top ten though. I have them. I have them at nine. Their record was ten and three last year, and eight and five and three in their conference. So a very good year last year. But they did. They didn't lose much. They only lost their safety, Jamie Robinson. But they got this incredible young wide receiver, Hakeem Williams, a freshman, um, not a transfer. He got offers from Bama as well as Georgia, but he decided to go to Florida State, and he is out of Stranahan High School. Now we've got a team who hasn't been super good the past couple of years. They had a solid year last year, going 10-4 and and 6-2 and in conference play, but they did lose their wide receiver, Keishon Booty booty i guess and their linebacker bj olajari to the draft but their most impactful player is going to be their cornerback denver harris who was a sophomore transfer out of texas a&m so we'll have to see how lsu is going to do this year we've got another interesting team here usc the trojans went 11 and 3 last year 8 and 1 in the pac-12 which is huge because we've already seen so many other pac-12 players Pac-12 teams on this list, but they did lose quite a few good players. They lost Jordan Addison, McKee Blackman, and Tuli Tuapalota. I hope I pronounced that right, but their most impactful player is obviously going to be their QB, Caleb Williams, who's a senior and just remember was a Heisman winner last year, and you could see it if you watched any of the Trojan season last year. He was lighting every team up no matter who they played. Now we enter the top six as we get the Tennessee Volunteers, who went 11-2 and two last year, so only two losses. Um, they went 6-2. and two. I believe they also beat Alabama. I don't remember too much, but I do think they did beat Alabama. But they did lose their QB, Hendon Hooker, to the draft, as well as their star wide receiver, Jalen Hyatt. But their most impactful player is going to be their new QB coming in, Nicholas Imaliva. I don't even know. Freshman out of Warren High School. We'll have to see how everything plays out there, but I think they're going to have another solid year. Next up, we do have Alabama, whose record is 11-2 and 6-2 and and in conference play. They lost their entire starting roster to the draft. Not really, but they did lose quite a few good players. But they just got... The, oh, yeah, they lost Bryce Young. So they got their new quarterback in here. Ty Simpson, who I believe was a backup last year, who's a junior, and a couple of years ago when he was getting scouted, he was number two in the ESPN 300. So we have to see how Alabama's going to do. Maybe a playoff. It's going to be close. It always is. But I have them at five, just barely missing out on the playoffs. Now, the first playoff team, I believe, is going to be Michigan, whose record is 13-1. and They went 9-0 and in conference play last year and they do not have an easy conference the big 10 is insane with penn state ohio state michigan michigan state it's just insane um and next year not this coming year the year after we're bringing in ucla and usc so it's going to get even more difficult but they lost a solid amount of players to the draft their most impactful player is going to be jj mccarthy who is in his junior year and last year he led uh, Michigan to the CFP semis after getting elimin before getting eliminated by TCU. But I do think they're going back to the playoffs again. Next up, we have my favorite team, Penn State, whose record is eleven and was eleven and two and seven and two in the Big Ten. Incredible year last year. They won the Rose Bowl against Utah pretty easily too. They won by like twenty one, maybe fourteen. I don't remember too much. But they did lose some good players to the draft. Um, Joey Porter Jr. went to the Steelers. Let's go Steelers. Very happy about that pickup. But they also lost their QB, Sean Clifford, which I'm actually happy about because he was washed. I don't even know why the Packers picked him up. I thought he was going to go undrafted. But um, pretty dumb pickup by the Packers. But their most impactful player is going to be the new QB coming in, Drew Aller, who's a sophomore. He play He played 
one or two games at the end of last year, I believe, just coming in every once in a while, in and out, just to see how good he was, and he played pretty well. Um, he was a five-star, number one QB in the country when he came out of high school. This team is elite, and they are going to the playoffs. I know for a fact. Now we have the team who's coming off of two championship wins in a row. They went 15-0 and last year and 8-0 and in conference play. Just insane. One of the best rosters in history. But they did lose quite a few players to the draft. Much of them to the Eagles. But they lost their starting quarterback, Stetson Bennett. But um, they do have another quarterback coming in. But their most impactful player is going... My bad. Notification popped up on the screen. Um, their most impactful player is going to be wide receiver Ra Ra Thomas. Sophomore transfer from Mississippi State. He is going to be elite. I already know it. We'll see. Maybe they go back to the championship. Maybe they lose in the semis. We will have to see how everything figures out. But then finally, my number one team in the country. I hate to do this because as a Penn State fan, I hate Ohio State with a burning passion. But I do have to respect them. They have an incredible roster. They do... They went 11-2 and last year and 8-1 and in the Big Ten. Their only loss was to Michigan, I believe. But they also beat Michigan once, so they evened out. But they lost Heisman finalist QB CJ Stroud to the draft, which was a big blow for them. But they do still have their star running back, Travion Henderson, who did get injured last year. But the year before that had over 1,600 yards. And even with getting injured last year, he still had over 600 yards. So he's a star running back. I'm really impressed with him. But I have Ohio State as my number one. Be sure to like the video. Be sure to subscribe to the channel. I'll see you all in the next one. Peace.